Today's best music. 107.3. Cool FM. Hey there, it's Tyler from Down with Webster. Tyler, tell me about your band. I uh, play in a band called Down with Webster. We're from Toronto, Canada. We've been together for 10 years writing and recording music, and our CD just came out in October. It's called Time to Win Volume 1. Where'd the name come from, Tyler? Um, we had like 10 minutes left in music class to come up with a, a name for our band for like a high school talent show, and that was the first one. And <laughs> ten, 10 years later, we're, st- we're sticking with it. <laughs> Tell me about that uh, junior high experience. Junior high experience? Uh, awkward. <laughs> but but fun. It was cool. We we won the first talent show we played, and that was like a sign to keep the band going. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We had a corrupt student council. Me and Cam were the president and vice president of our school, so we basically, you know, you came very it. close to getting impeached several times. Good times. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, so you guys, uh, yeah, you have a new album out. Uh, why don't you tell me about your new record? All right, cool. Well. Uh, we recorded this record over the past, I don't know, year or two in our garage, in our basement. We went to Miami to the Hit Factory, recorded this all over, and it's got seven songs on it, so it seems like a short record, but it's it's part one of a two-part album, and you got to check it out. It doesn't sound like anything else. Your, your other record comes out next spring, eh? That's right. And Timbaland said you guys are the illest group he's ever seen live in person. Uh, what does it take to get so ill? And do you have any advice for bands who are looking to get that ill? The illness, yeah. Um, well, hopefully he knows what he's talking about. Um, my advice to other bands, honestly, would be well, I guess it, there's probably a few things. First of all, you got to practice a lot. Doesn't happen easily. Get really good at what you do. Uh, you got to be relentless, especially if you're from Canada, because it takes a long ass time for anyone else to care about what you're doing when you're up here. Apparently, yeah. And um, play live, like get a really, really good live show together. Because if you can fill a room up with people who are loving what you do, everyone else can't uh, can't ignore it. What was it like being in the band for ten years, and you know nothing happening and nothing happening, and then all of a sudden it happens? Was there a point where you wanted to give up, or was this when you're in the band for so long? Was it just like kind of a fun thing on the side? No, I mean we had a, a pretty serious outlook on the whole thing from. Uh, from a very young age, I, I just honestly, we had, we thought we had something special. We loved doing what we were doing together. No one else wanted to go off and pursue other things. And it was just, we figured it's a matter of time to keep doing what we're doing. And at some point we're going to catch a break. What's uh, the process then? Because you have seven people in your band, Tyler. That's got to be hard. Yeah. I mean, it, it, at times it's not the easiest thing to manage, but you know, over the years, it's actually become easier. Just people figure out what they're good at doing, how they can help out, what areas they're not so helpful in. And eventually, you know, it kind of becomes a, a fine-tuned machine, which is, you know, clearly still being tuned. But it's been getting easier. So tell me about the whole Gene Simmons and Timbaland thing. Uh, they each wanted to sign you to their own records. Did you end up signing with either? And, um, and what was that process like? Tell me about that. It was a weird process. I mean, they're completely separate. With, uh, with Gene Simmons, we just had a call one day when we were in our studio. Um, our manager called and said, hey, Gene's in town. He's talking about you all over TV and the radio, and he wants to meet you guys for dinner. And like half an hour later, we were at this like, dive diner having bacon and eggs with Gene Simmons. <laughs> that Pretty must wild. have been surreal. Yeah, it was totally weird. He's like the exact same dude as he is on TV. <laughs> that is not, it's not an act. That is who he is. Yeah. You know, uh, Gene is a cool guy. It just wasn't the right fit. Like, we, uh, we already were talking to Motown about doing a deal with them, and we're pretty comfortable kind of going down that path. So the timing with Gene didn't work out. And uh, as for Timbaland, we went down to Miami and recorded with him last Christmas, I guess it was. Okay. And so he, he gave us an offer to come to his label, but, I mean, kind of the same thing. We were already down the road with Motown and so the way we left off with him is let's just make some music together and find a way to work together aside from being on your label right that must have been so just so bizarre you know like nothing for a long time and then all of a sudden some of the biggest powerhouses in music today are begging for your attention it's totally bizarre it just I think it made us realize that you know the, the world is a smaller place than you think and some of the ideas that you think are so unattainable if you work hard enough it can happen very quickly. Did you ever lose faith along the way? Promise I never did. Really? I lost faith in certain people who we were working with, 
Like, you know, we've had a one or two bad managers and some people that weren't quite uh, fitting in with the vision of the band. But, I mean, the core of the band, honestly, we've just been rock solid in terms of, I don't know, just relentless, man. I'm telling you, you can't give up. Yeah, it's got to be so, um, I don't know, su- such a struggle. Yeah, it is. It is. It's crazy. Like, what you're trying to do isn't an easy thing, obviously. Yeah, and then you have all these people around you. Like, I've heard so many horror stories of bands starting out, getting screwed over by management, and just think about how many great bands we've missed out on because of bad managers. I agree with you. You know? You know, some bands had it right. Apparently the Stones don't have a manager. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure people have done it without, but I mean, at this point, like, we're, we're stoked. We have, like, two of the greatest people helping out with the band. I still do a lot of the management as well, and I think it's important to surround yourself with people that are family or at least feel like family. Yeah, good call. Tell me about the song Rich Girls. Uh, Rich Girls is a Hall & Oates song that all of us just like loved growing up. And uh, I think maybe last year at some point, I think we were up north for a couple of days and someone put it on. And we just thought that it would be such a cool song to kind of bring back because I don't think with our generation it was ever like a, a big hit for people. Yeah. It wasn't a song that you know, people would play at parties or play like a throwback song. I think it just kind of went under the radar for our generation so we thought we could put a pretty cool spin on it that's cool man yeah it sounds great thanks man i have one more question you have seven people in your band uh pat's on vocals and guitar you're on bass uh, and keys uh marty's on drums cam's on vocals uh, you have a dj and cap is the hype man he's the hype man tell me about that because seriously if he's just running around yelling at people that sounds yeah. like the best gig ever yeah he's got it made <laughs> Cap has it made. I mean, he doesn't have to carry any instruments. He doesn't really even have to sound check. He, <laughs> his, his two instruments are a megaphone and a flag. And yeah, he's got, he's got a good deal. But honestly, there's, there's more to being a hype man than you think. He also, I don't know if you've seen, but he's got a bunch of videos online. And uh, he puts himself out in some pretty funny positions for us. So. Wow, that's crazy. Well, if you're ever looking for another hype man, uh, Tyler, give me a call. You got Seriously, it, man. Because I'm all over just yelling at people. Yeah, you mean b- bounce around the stage for an hour and a half. I could do that. I think so. And okay, then, cool. and then after, get the girls. Sounds perfect. You got it, buddy. <laughs> hey, it's Tyler from Dan with Webster on one zero seven three Cool FM.